when the stars above are blinking and the house is dark and still and the sound comes click click clicking from a nearby window sill now if you see a figure crouching in the ghostly pale moonshine and the bullseye gleams through your startled dreams then it's Jimmy Valentine look out look out look out for Jimmy Valentine for he's a pal of mine a sentimental cop with a touch that lingers in his sand papered fingers he can find the combination of your pocketbook <laughs> look out look out for when you see his lantern shine that's the time to jump right up and shout Help! he'd steal a horse and cart he'd even steal a girlie's heart when Jimmy Valentine gets out <laughs> Bedtime, children. Bedtime. Oh, yeah. Quiet, yeah. children, quiet. Now, now it's time for you all to be in bed. Oh, Miss Jones, please let him sing some more. We have so much fun when Mr. Earl comes. Oh, I don't want to go to bed. Ah, oh, we, we don't, don't want to go to bed. Quiet, children. Shh, quiet. Now, you all know the rules. Bedtime is bedtime. Mrs. Jones is right. Remember now. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man what? Tired! Children, children! Off to bed now, or Mr. Earl won't come to see you anymore. Ah, oh, he doesn't come to see us. He comes to see you. Come on now, children. Everybody fall in, fall in. And shut! Forward march! Well, I did. I think I'll move in here. I'm an orphan. Uh-uh. Age limit's 15. Besides, you're a problem child. Oh, there you go again. Of course I'm a problem. Everybody with ideas is a problem. And the bigger the idea... I know. The bigger the problem. Now look, honey. You're going to get stuck with me sooner or later. Why don't you break down and marry me now? Uh-uh. You know how I feel about you, Larry. But, but what will we live on? you pay the grocer off with the dreams? Sure, if you just say yes. You'd but... better quit dreaming and wake up. Oh, and hurry, you'll be late for work. I don't have to go to work tonight. Why not? I quit. Oh, Larry, not again. Mm-hmm. What was it this time? Oh, that job had no future. Who wants to be a night clerk in a hotel? Larry, you're really hopeless. Well, it just goes to show you how much I need you. Now, listen, Mary. Don't you realize that every man who ever amounted to anything had a woman behind him? Look at Washington, Lincoln, or, or Paul Revere. He had a horse. All right, he had a horse. Now, this is positively the last time I'm going to ask you. Will you marry me or won't you? Yes. I'm not going to come here night after night. What did you say? I said yes. You mean you... Well, I've been asking you for two years, and you keep saying no. Why, why do you suddenly say yes? Well, I figured I, I won't ever be happy without you. I, I might as well try to find happiness with you. Mary. You know what this means? Honey, it's all I need. Now I'll really go places. And you know what I'll be able to do for you? I'll buy you automobiles, yachts, diamonds, furs. You'll have servants in the swellest apartment on Riverside Drive. Larry, Mr. Dunlap expects you at 10 o'clock. 
If you want that job, you better hurry. Well, how can I be there at 10 o'clock? I'm seeing Bemis the publisher at 10. Look, Larry, for a year and a half, you've been seeing Bemis the publisher at 10. Today, you're seeing Mr. Dunlap. Hey, now, wait a minute. Just because you're pressing my pants don't mean you're going to wear them. Oh, you're a problem. You're worse than a problem. You're a Chinese puzzle. Well, you'll get me put together someday. Larry, when you see Mr. Dunlap, please don't tell him how to run his business. Not the first day, anyway. Yeah, that's a fine job for me. Floor walker in a five and ten cent store. Good morning, madame. What's that? Mousetraps? Oh, yes, indeed, madame. Right this way. No, madame, you'll have to furnish the mice yourself. <laughs> well, we can't live on hopes much longer. You're going for that job and you're taking it. Oh, honey, things are just beginning to break. You've been saying that ever since we were married. Here, put on your pants. Only yesterday I was talking to Sophie Tucker. She stood right by the piano and I played her one of my songs. Did she say she'd sing it? Well, no, it wasn't in her key, but she said it was a great song. Gee, I could take that act of hers and really do something with it. Sophie Tucker's doing all right, Larry. Yeah, I guess she is. Hey, you want me to smell a benzene? Oh, it'll be all right when you get out in the air. There. Larry. Hmm? I don't want to discourage you, but it's just that... Well... If only you'd have let me keep my job at St. Mark's, things might have been a little easier for both of us. What do you mean? My wife working? Why, you want people to think I can't support you? I'll get it. Mr. Larry, I live here? Yes. Well, we got a piano for him. A piano? Why, well, there must be some mistake. All right, boys, wheel her right in. Stick her over there next to the fireplace. Larry, huh? did you buy that piano? That piano? Well, there's nothing to worry about, honey. It's only two fifty a month, and it'll be ours in no time. But we can't afford it. Well, I gotta have a piano or I can't do my work. Careful, boys, now. Don't scratch it. Now, watch it. Be careful. That'll be seven fifty. $7.50? Yeah, two and a half for the first payment and five bucks for the hauling. Uh, pay it, will you, honey? Honey, tip the boys a dollar for some beer, huh? Thanks, lady. So long. You know, honey, I was going to get a baby grand, but this is all right for a while. Look at that finish. You know those keys are solid ivory? Too bad they're not bone. We could make soup out of them. Now listen to the tone this thing's got, too. You always stir my imagination. Sometimes it borders on fantasy. And some Times I find visions flash through my mind close to reality. Night, a soft guitar, a hidden lane, a moon, and here and there a star for a man. His dream. Night, a cricket's cry, a whispered word, a kiss, and now and then a sigh for a man. When they meet, seem to say it's sublime, and their hearts proudly beat to a tune that is older than time. Night must fade away, and 
and yet it leaves a love so all the world will say there's a man and his dream gee if i could get that number published i'll bet it'd sell a million copies it's beautiful larry have you ever played it for any of the publishers? Well, I've played it for all of them, but they can't see it because they don't know me. There was a little number called After the Ball. They couldn't see that either. Well, the fellow that wrote it went around town for years trying to peddle it, but these no, publishers no, can't no, see no, past no. their... No, listen, you're getting yourself all worked up. Look, your collar's wilting. Come on, you'd better get going. That job won't wait all day. Well, okay, if that's the way you want it, but I'll tell you one thing. It's going to set me back at least five years. Floor walk. You got there? Oh, about 40 cents. <laughs> Doing all right. Oh, that's nothing. Some days we get a dollar. Come on in, boys. Fellas, I want you to meet my wife. This is Mrs. Earl. Here. Well, who are these boys? I bumped into them down the street here. They were singing and dancing, and people were throwing money at them. Now, you know how my brain is always working. I got a terrific idea. What kind of an idea? Well, I figured out I could take these kids and with a lot of hard work put together a vaudeville act. Call it the, the Singing Newsboys. Never been done before. But, Larry, you can't just suddenly pick up a lot of people in the street and have a vaudeville act. Oh, yes, you can, the way I got it figured out. Say, if people will toss coins at a bunch of kids on the street, They'll pay to see them on the stage. All we gotta do is clean them up a little, put a high polish on them, and with a hot bath, they'll be worth their weight in gold. A bath? What's that? <laughs> Never mind. In there, kids. We're gonna go to work right away. Larry? Huh? What happened to the job? Well, why should I work for someone else, honey, when I can be in business for myself? Didn't you even go to see Mr. Dunlap? Oh, who wants to work in the five and ten? I got a hold of something big. This is what I've been waiting for. Come on in here and listen. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right, come on, boys. I got a new song we can frame our act around. Well, what's it called? If I was a millionaire. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll play it over once. You see if you can pick up the words, huh? You ready, men? If I was a millionaire, kids, if I was a millionaire, there wouldn't be nothing too good in the world for me and my pals to share now don't tell me i'm shooting hot air kids but here's what i'd do on the square if i was a real life regular first class cross my heart millionaire up every schoolhouse in the nation I'd write upon the blackboard big and clear instead of one there will be two vacations each vacation six months twice a year oh there wouldn't be no school when it was raining I'd let you stay at home when it was fair 
you'd have free soda fountains. Say I'd build you ice cream mountains if I was a millionaire. Well, when do we start to work? For me, you don't. Why? What's the matter with this? You're all right, but it don't mean nothing. They'll never come in to see a kid act. Well, I can't figure it out. I guess you're like all the others. I thought you were one fellow that was showman enough to see what I was bringing you. Why, listen, Mr. Gimlick, since the world began... Look at Earl. I'm very busy. We don't want to make a whole big thing out of it. I can't use them. I don't want them. Well, that's your show business for you. You bring them a brilliant idea and they slam the door in your face. Fellas like this Gimlick trying to tell me people won't pay to see kids. Why, holy tomatoes, since the world began, people have been working, fighting, and dying just for kids. And he says they don't care anything about them. No, they'll come in to see dogs and jugglers and trained seals. But these giant brains who call themselves showmen say they won't come in to see kids. There must be somebody, Larry, somewhere who'll see it the way we do. Well, if there is, he's not in New York. Larry, I've told you a thousand times, there's just one man for you, Proctor. Why, he owns theaters all over New York. Proctor? I can't even get in to see him. We sit in his outer office day after day, watch him come in, watch him go out, and the girl at the desk tells me he's gone to Europe. But, Larry, you, you've got to keep trying. Well, what's the use? Maybe they're right. Maybe I am a flop. Oh, that's not like you, Larry. Well, anyhow, what am I giving you, honey? Living in a dump like this and coming home night after night screaming about my troubles, I better forget the whole business. Oh, I don't mind. Really, I don't. I believe in you no matter what they say. Thanks, honey. Oh, you just feel this way because you're tired. Why don't you run and get some sleep, huh? I'm sure you'll have better luck tomorrow. Mrs. Earl, you're solid gold. Night, honey. I beg your pardon, young lady. There must be some mistake. I believe this is my car. Oh, there's no mistake, Mr. Proctor. I... Well, I simply had to talk to you. Well, is this rather an unusual way to... Oh, I know it's unusual, but I just had to. You see... You see, I... Well, I'm Mrs. Earl. Who? My husband is Larry Earl. Well, I'm afraid I haven't had the privilege of meeting your husband. Oh, but he knows you, Mr. Proctor. He thinks you're a wonderful showman. Well, that's very generous of him, I'm sure. But... You see, he writes songs. He does. Well, they're very good. Really, they are. And, and now he's got an act. Uh, newsboys, he just picked them up out of nothing. My dear young lady, everybody in New York has got an act. Oh, but not like Larry's. Really, it's good. He just took these youngsters and... You mean kids? Well, yes. Well, ever since the world began, Mr. Proctor, people have been working and fighting and dying just for kids. Everybody loves them. Oh, don't you see? It's a great idea. You tell your husband to come and see me tomorrow morning. Oh, Mr. Proctor. Oh, oh my goodness. I... That's oh. all right, Mrs. Earl. Uh, that's quite all right. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, there's one very important thing, Mr. Proctor. 
please don't tell Larry about this. No. You see, he wants to lick the world all by himself. Oh, he's different from anybody you've ever seen. Yes, I understand. You know, my wife thinks I'm pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's one more thing. Don't let Larry alarm you. Oh, when he talks to you, I mean. Oh, he's good, like I told you, and so is his act. But he's not quite as good as he'll tell you he is. He isn't. Uh-uh. Nobody could be that good. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Mary! Mary! Wait till I tell you. Mary! For heaven's sakes, what's happened? Proctor, I saw him. No. Absolutely. You didn't. I did. I went right up to that secretary of his and I said, Now, looky here, I'm Larry Earl. Well, you could have blowed me over. She didn't let me get any further than that. She said, Mr. Proctor will see you. So me and the kids went in and there was Proctor, just as friendly as you please. So we, we showed him the act. <laughs> he didn't even let me finish. Larry, he said, he called me Larry, he said, Larry, you're in. You're in? Yeah. What does that mean? What does it mean? Why, it means we get a night's trial at his own theater, Proctor's Fifth Avenue. Oh, Larry, that's wonderful. How did you do it? Oh, I just talked right up to him. I gave him that stuff about people working and fighting and dying just for kids. He sure was impressed. You know, Larry, oh, you won't believe this, but I dreamt last night that's exactly what would happen. You did? Well, tonight, see if you can dream me up about 40 weeks booking, huh? That? Something for you. And wait till you see this. That you're the best skimmer in town, honey. Pretty as a picture. Oh, Larry, they're beautiful, but, but where did you get the money for these things? Gem Credit Company. You just sign a paper and you pay them by the week. I told them I was working. Work? But, Larry, you're not working. It's just a one night's tryout. Oh, we'll be there for months. <laughs> Okay, buddy. Come in. Here it is. My dinner ain't setting so good, Mr. Earl. Couldn't even eat mine. My knees are shaking. I'm scared. Me too. Who set the eggs at? There's some eggs in the Here, hey, now, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. I'll give you a trick that'll help you. It's called I am. Now, when you get out there on that stage, you just keep saying to yourself, I am here. I am an actor. I am a good actor. First thing you know, the audience will start believing it, and then you're sad. Why, well, you forget all about being scared. Come on now, let's try it once, huh? I, I am, am here. here. I, I am, am an actor. actor. I, I am, am a good actor. actor. And I'm still scared. Oh, well, you'll get over it, see? Now, come on. Let's go out there and give it all we got, fellas. If we put this thing over, no telling where we're going. And if we don't... We'll be back selling papers. Yeah. I'll probably be with you. badly bent, I'm broke, and I'm busted. Haven't got a cent. Well, don't tell us your troubles. We've got troubles enough. Here yeah, now, why those sour faces? Things are never that tough. How can we help it when everything looks black? Well, first of all, let me tell you, you're on the wrong track. Why don't you go fly a kite? And tie your troubles to the tail They'll be blown away by a merry gale Go fly a kite And toss your worries to the wind 
and they won't come back. They'll be too chagrined. Go on, make friends with the sky. Have a talk with the sun. It's the bright way to live. If you pardon the pun, go fly a kite, and you'll imagine you're a king. 'Cause you've got your world on a piece of string. Go fly a kite and tie your troubles to the tail. They'll be blown away by a merry gale. Go fly a kite and toss your worries to the wind. And you won't come back. They'll be too grim. Go on, make friends with the sun. Have a talk with the sun. It's the best way to live. Honey, baby, if, if you just use the pun, go fly a kite and you imagine you're a king. 'Cause you got your world on a piece of string. Not bad, young man. Not bad. In fact, you're almost as good as you said you were. <laughs> Gee, thanks. I I thought you'd go for it. Those kids are great, aren't they? Very good. Very good. Say now, stick around. I want to see you a little later. <laughs> Larry. Oh. Larry, I just talked to Mr. Proctor, and he said he might keep the act here two weeks. Isn't that wonderful? I got lots bigger things on my mind than staying here. Take it easy, Larry. Mr. Proctor only said he might. Oh, nothing can stop me now. I'm going up like a rocket. You know how my mind is, honey? Working all the time. Well, I got a terrific idea. I got it while I was out there on the stage. You're going to buy the theater? Oh no, it's bigger than that. Now you saw how that audience loved those kids, didn't you? Well, if that act went over here, it'll go anywhere. I'll have kid acts all over the country. I'll pick them up out of nowhere. I'll give them a stage name before they got a family name, and I have them doing off to Buffalo's before they're able to walk. Will you do one thing for me, please? Let's see how things turn out here, huh? Shall I call you a cab, Mr. Earl? Yeah, one with white horses. Tell Proctor I want to see him. Call Rising Webbers and reserve a table for Mr. and Mrs. Larry Earl. The best in the house, honey. We're going to celebrate.
Well, how do you like it? Beautiful. Does it light up at night? No, but that's an idea. Come on, I'll show you the office of the president. Well, how about this? It's a cozy little place. Look at that desk. Solid mahogany. All this furniture, Larry, does it come with the office? No, I bought it. You bought it? Mm -hmm. But how? I made a down payment. But where did you get the money? From Bemis, the publisher. He saw the act, bought the song, gave me $2,000 advance. Didn't I tell you? No, you didn't tell me. You know what I got in there? Elephant. <laughs> The highest priced publicity man in show business, Speed King. Used to be with Ziegfeld. Now he's with me. He's dynamite. Come on, watch this fellow work. Anybody uh, been in to see me, Speed? Yeah, a lot more child actors. I threw them downstairs, dimples and all. Did my heart good to hear them bounce. I hate kids. Hated them ever since I saw myself in the family album draped over a polar bear rug. Say, uh, Speed, don't you think we ought to get some publicity in the newspapers about our uh, auditions? I got a better idea. We're not going to give any more auditions in New York. Why not? Sit down, Mrs. Earl, and I'll give you a slight idea of what a bargain your husband's getting for his money. First thing we do is we hire a train. A train? You mean a, a, a whole train? Sure, a choo-choo. Then we paint it white. Paint Mother Goose characters all over it. And write down the sides in gold letters, Larry Earl, the star maker. Get it? Why, sure. We could hold kitty contests in every city in the country. That's it, audition room on wheels. We'll tear the whole inside of the train out and make it over. Carpet the floors, pianos, rooms for the kiddies and their mothers. Not only find talent for the ex, but make the name Larry Earl more famous than castor oil. You see, Mary, what did I tell you? He's dynamite. I hate to be a killjoy, but who's going to pay for all this? I got Mr. Thomas Marlowe in the bag. Marlowe's malted milk. A spectacular nationwide advertisement on wheels. You find the kids, Marlowe pays for the train. As the press of this country has informed you, any child who is a consumer of Marlowe's malted milk will be eligible for Mr. Larry Earle's talent search. And now, my friends, I want to tell you a little bit about our product. For the past 22 years, our laboratory... <laughs> Leave tomorrow morning. Be here with your bags about nine. All right, Mrs. Swartz, you and the little girl will be ready to leave with us tonight. We'll have your accommodations ready. Thank you, Mr. Earl. Goodbye, Susan. Goodbye, Mr. Earl. Next. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Hello, how do you do? This is my son, Bismarck. Bismarck, say hello to the gentleman. Bismarck is six years old, weighs 43 pounds, got blue eyes, and he's had the mumps. Well, what can he do? What can he do? Well, he's the smartest kid in the United Snaps. He can play a piccolo and pluck a duck at the same time. You want to see it? Has anybody got a duck? Not me. I usually carry one around with me, too. 
Just my luck. Go on, recite for the gentleman. The one about the bimble bum. Uh, the bum, the bees. Go ahead. Oh, I wish I was a bumblebee. I wish that it was spring. I buzz and buzz and buzz and buzz and oh, how I would sting. Oh, how he would what? Sting. Oh, I wish I was a big bullfrog beneath the giant ant oak. I sit out in the shade all day, and oh, how I would... Oh, I think Bees Myers got something there. Oh, That's I... enough. That's enough. Bees. What's the matter? You don't like him? Well, I got six more to tell him. I go get him. No, 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 never mind. I'll let you know if we can use Bees Myers. What's your name? Stanislaus Papalopoulos. Occupation? Huh? No, I mean, what kind of work do you do? I'm a steel worker. I'm a smelter. Smelter, eh? Wonderful how your little boy takes after you. Oh, he's a smart kid. <laughs> Go on, darling. Sing for the gentleman. No. Oh, that's funny. You know, she sang only last night for Uncle George and my four nephews. Go on, honey. He's not a policeman. He's a nice man. And he's not the boogeyman. He won't eat you. Fortunately, madam, I've had my lunch. Come on now, Jenny. Let me hear you sing. No! <laughs> you know, she sings. I wonder who's kissing her now. And she sings it beautifully. <laughs> Go on, sweetheart. No! I'm so embarrassed, Mr. Earl. Uh, perhaps if you sang a little bit of it, oh, just enough to get her started, maybe Jenny would pick it up from there. All right, we can try it. I wonder who's kissing her now. I wonder who's teaching her how. You see, Jenny, now you sing. No! Oh, please, Mr. Earl. Perhaps if you sang just a little more. All right. I wonder who's kissing her now. I wonder who's teaching her how. Wonder who's looking into her eyes, breathing. Telling lies I wonder who's buying the wine For lips that I used to call mine I wonder if she ever tells him all And there was a farmhouse. And as Willie started to dig a hole under the fence, he spied... Uncle Speed! Where's Uncle Larry? In bed, asleep, where I ought to be. As Willie started to dig under the fence, he spied a lettuce patch. What's lettuce, Uncle Speed? What's lettuce? Why, it's... it's... Lettuce is lettuce. He spied a lettuce patch, a great big one. Hurrying over, Willie began to nibble on a lettuce. Why did he nibble at the lettuce, Uncle Speed? Because he was a rabbit. Rabbits like lettuce. People eat lettuce, too. Do they? Oh, people eat rabbits, too. Quiet, Dracula. And then Willie began... I bet he goes into the house. Does he go into the house, Uncle Speed? I don't know. We haven't come to that yet. 
He nibbled at the lettuce and then thought he would like to have a drink of water. So with a hop, skippity, and a jump, he scurried over to the well and reaching for the bucket. What color was Willy Rabbit, Uncle Speed? I don't know. What difference does it make? All I know is what's in the book. And as Willy Rabbit leaned over to get the bucket... Uncle Speed! Are you going to live with us in New York? I doubt if I live to get to New York. And as Willy Rabbit leaned over to get the bucket... He fell in. I bet you anything he fell in. All right, he fell in. And all the little children from the house heard the kerplunk and ran over to the well to see what had happened. Uncle Speed, look, I got teeth way well, back like here. You better hold on to them, son. And just then, a big black wolf came over the hill, and seeing all the dear little children, he jumped over the fence and ate them all up. Oh, don't say that in the book, Uncle Speed. Well, it ought to. Oh, I can't stand it day after day. I'm going mad. I got to get out of here. Let me out. Let me out. Just a minute. Just a minute. You're quarantined. I'm hot. Quarantined. Dr. Zotas, nobody leaves this room for ten days. Ten days? That red-headed kid in there's got the chicken pox. I can't stand it. I'll go mad. I'll bite myself. No, no, Speed. Take it easy. I'll get you another storybook. Another storybook? I'll <laughs> kill myself. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. No, 
away with me, Lucille, in my merry Oldsmobile. Down the road of life we'll fly, automobile bubbling, you and I. First we'll do a little crank, and then we'll go a crank, and over to the village chapel, then the way we'll go a chug, and ready for some hug, and faces better than an apple, you can go as far as you like with me. My Mary Oldsmobile Big smile. Great big smile. Come on. That's fine. Now we'll get another one. Come on. Another big smile. Come on. A big smile. You can do better than that. Hold it. That's fine. All right, kids. Here you go. Back to rehearsal. Come on. Make it happy. On your way. Come. Well, you've got another great show there, Mr. Earl. It's a humdinger, and I don't mean maybe. Where do you find all these children, Mr. Earl? Oh, we get them out of the cities, the country, all over. Sure, just turn over any rock and there they are. <laughs> but they're practically babies. How do you get them to do all those things? It's a psychological problem. We mother them. <laughs> Incidentally, what do you do with all the mothers? Got any notion? <laughs> <laughs> How many acts have you got on the road now, Mr. Earl? Well, we got 14. This one, the Nursery Follies, when it opens in Chicago, will be 50. <laughs> well, they certainly are an amazing bunch of kids. It's the most talented group I've ever had. And they look like the youngest. We're going to recruit our next review from a maternity board. <laughs> Just one more question, Mr. Earl. Our readers would like to know how you take these kids and make actors out of them. Yes, what's the secret? Well, it's a secret formula that I got from the Maharaja of Nangpu. It's called work. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Earl. Yeah, thanks for the interview. This is good stuff, Mr. Earl. Best of luck, although you certainly don't need it. Thank you, boys. Drop in any time now. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Hello? Yes, Stella. Who? Oh, I thought he'd come around. No, I don't want to talk to him. What's his proposition? Tell him yes, as quick as we can get the act together. We'll open in Detroit in about three weeks. Say, Stella, see if you can get my wife on the phone, will you? Come in. Come in! Oh, hello, honey. I didn't see you there. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, that's all right. I enjoyed watching. You know how I love a parade. What's on your mind, honey? Oh, I'd sort of forgotten. Let me see. Oh, I know. It was about St. Mark's Orphanage. Yeah? I thought it'd be nice if we could send them a little money. Why, sure. Stella, make out a check to St. Mark's Orphanage for $1,500. Oh, Larry, that's too much. Stella, $100 is plenty. Why don't you send them a bean bag? Well, how's the new batch of talent? You know that kid from Albany we signed yesterday? Yeah? He's a midget. He's 35 years old, got a wife and four children. I'll fire the midget and hire the children. Say, who is that? I don't know, but it's pretty good, whoever it is. Timo 
You've got quite a big voice for a little girl. Thank you. What's your name? Jane Gray. I'm her mother, Colossal Salvini. Oh, how do you do? I'm Larry Earl. Oh, Mr. Earl. <laughs> You're a little bit of all right, you know that? Jane, I'm sorry I can't use you. You can? Oh, but that's absurd. Well, this child sings E above high C. Well, I could listen to her sing all day, but I still couldn't use her in any of my acts. You see, opera's a little out of my line. Mother, perhaps... Look, quiet, child. I can't understand it, Mr. Earl. If everyone loves the kind of music Jane sings, everyone... Well, that's probably true, but my business is vaudeville. Now, it might seem strange to you, but my acts play to audiences who prefer tightrope walking to grand opera. We cater to customers, not patrons. But I tell you what I can do now. I can, I can send you over to Mr. Harak. He specializes in concert work, and I think he can use you. Mr. Hurok, please. Larry Earle's secretary speaking. Mr. Hurok, Mr. Earle would like to make an appointment with you for a little girl by the name of... Uh, uh, Jane Gray. Of uh, Jane Gray. Yes, a child with the most extraordinary voice. A child with the most extraordinary voice. Yes, she's the daughter of Carlotta Salvini. The daughter of Carlotta Salvini. Also Salvatore Salvini. I'm sorry, Mr. Earle, but I just had to talk to you. I hope you don't mind. Well, I am a little busy right now. Oh, I know you are. But you see, when Mother was in the room, I kept quiet. You were talking about me, and yet no one asked me about me. So I thought I'd just like to tell you a little about me. <laughs> all right. You go right ahead. Tell me all about you. You see, Mother and Father were in a traveling opera company and sang opera all their lives. So Mother won't let me sing anything else. Well, that's why I'm sending you to Mr. Hura. He can use you. But I know the kind of music you want, Mr. Earl, and I like it, and I can sing it, too. Oh, Mr. Earl, won't you please give me a chance? Go ahead, Larry. Why don't you let her? Well, you're certainly a pretty good little salesman. There's the piano. Go ahead. <laughs> In the taxi, honey, you better be ready by half past eight. Now, dearie, don't be late. I wanna be there when the band starts playing. Remember when we get there, honey, the two step I'm gonna have them all. Gonna dance out both my shoes when they play the jelly roll blues. Tomorrow night at the dark comes strutters. But to that, but to that, my body really need to ride it out of the down to get you in a taxi, 350 on the meter. But what could be sweeter? Remember when we get there, honey, two step, I'm gonna have them all. Oh, me, oh, you, oh, chicken barbecue. Tomorrow night at the dark comes shutters ball. Oh, oh, oh. oh, man, can't wait. Come early, stay late. meaning of this. Oh, I was only singing, Mother. Singing? Oh, and you call that singing? Mr. Earl, are you responsible for this? Why, yes, I am. I'm glad I am, because I didn't know your daughter could sing popular songs. I can use her. Oh, my child won't sing such trash. She comes from a distinguished family of musicians. She'll either sing great music or nothing at all. Oh, but, Mother, I like popular music. I like to sing it. Oh, oh I'm glad your poor dear father, the great Salvatore Salvini, didn't live to hear you say that. Well, now, my dear Madame Salvini, I think I could make a great star out of Jane. More than that, I'll build a Broadway show around her. A big review. Review? No matter what you may call it, it is still vaudeville. Do you want to put my child on a level with train seals and Russian acrobats? No. A thousand times, no! But, Mother, I want... Enough! Now, uh, just a minute, Madame Salvini. How would you like 40 weeks on the Gus Sun time? For yourself, Carlotta Salvini. What did you say? 40 weeks solid. Oh. Now, I have a letter here. Oh, yes, here it is. It's from uh, Gus Sun himself, asking me to spot him a class act. Oh, 40 weeks. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would be too wonderful. 
Uh, I mean, getting back into the theater. Why, sure. You could leave Jane with Mrs. Earle here. She'd take wonderful care of her. Oh, I'd look after her, Madame Salvini, as if she were my own. Oh, Mother, oh, Quiet, child. Of course, I should have to give the matter some consideration. Well, I... Uh, uh, but uh, you can tell Mr. Sun you're quite sure I will accept his very splendid offer. Oh, good. Of course, we have to agree upon salary and... And Billy. You can leave all of that to me. Oh, Madam Salvini, why don't you have lunch with me? Then we could talk everything over. Oh, that's really nice of you, Mrs. Earl. And I'll hear from you, Mr. Yes, Earl. Yes, all right. Yes. I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Earl. I'll work hard in everything. I'll see you tomorrow, Jane. And goodbye. Come, Jane. Au revoir, Mr. Earl. Au revoir. Goodbye, Madam Salvini. Hello, Stella. Get me the Gus Sun office. Well, what do you think of my idea of starring that youngster in a Broadway show? You can't stand prosperity. Now you want to get in competition with Ziegfeld, Dillingham, and Erlanger. Well, sure. Why not? Are they any better than I am? Yeah, much better. Uh, hello, Benny. How are you, Larry? Oh, I'm fine. Say, uh, you people still want to book that Vacation Days Act, don't you? You bet we do. Well, I'm going to give it to you. Why? Yeah, well, there's a little string attached to it. You, you get the act all right, but you have to book Carlotta Salvini with it. Whoa, right now, whoa, now me. wait a minute. This is Carlotta Salvini's opera. She's class. Okay, you got me over a barrel. I'll take her. Oh, fine. Give her the whole tour. Forty weeks. The Gus Sun time, four shows a day. They'll have her following Finkel's dogs. Think she'll play it? Good, kids. Now take a rest. Oh, Jane. Come here a minute. You know you're late for rehearsal, don't you? Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Larry. It's just that I was playing with the girls, and I guess I forgot the time. You forgot? You can't forget in this business. Well, I only wanted to play a little. Mm -hmm. Sit down a minute. Now look, Jane, everybody has to sacrifice a certain amount of fun to get what they want. You want to be a star, don't you? Well, I don't know. It's an awful lot of work. Well, of course it's a lot of work, hard work. But you're gonna get used to it. Good troopers do. Can't you see, Jane, this is show business. It's another world where we're different from other people. Just look at them now. They, they, they can't wait to get out of here because they're, they're just kids. But you've got something else. You've got something that sets you apart. Jane, did you ever notice how a star shines? How it seems to stand out way up there in the sky? And there's magic in that. You know what I mean? Yes, Uncle Larry. I think I do. Well, that's what I want to do with you. I want to put you up there. But you've got to help me. And you can't have any thought in your head except about that star. And you've got to go on and on. You have to work and work and work. The sunrise is conducive to elation. 
has witnessed the exuberance of your felicitation. Such matutinal obesity uh, should never die aboard it. So I return the greeting, or in other words, uh, good morning. Now class will come to order. Take page 32. Assuming that you've studied, Miss Smith, you're late. Let's hear from you. My granny's don't know what I'm going to do with you. You're late practically every morning. Now give an account of yourself, yeah? I studied every lesson. On every page I turned. I couldn't get the answers. But this, at least, I learned. The teacher will always do the trick When you don't know your lesson in arithmetic An apple for the teacher will meet with great success If you forgot to memorize the Gettysburg address A little bit of glamour, a charm that's cute and quaint Then he'll excuse your grammar and believe you're what you aimed you may be just a lemon, but he'll think you're a peach. Just bring an apple for the teacher when he starts to teach. Yes, bring an apple for the teacher when he starts to teach. Now desist from such rascality. I shall not be perplexed by charm or personality. Tommy Jones, you're next. And don't forget, young man, I want to see your father tonight. Yeah, you and Ma go. What do you mean, me and Ma both? She hasn't seen him in ten years. <laughs> now, Whitey, did you study your homework last night? I sure did. Let me hear it, please. Down with the arithmetic, down with the geography, down with the schoolhouse, and down with everything. <laughs> Well, now that you're repentant, I suppose I should relent. So let us then continue uh, with the music uh, rudiment. Do, re, mi, fa, so,
teacher. You know your lessons for today? Yes, teacher. Dear, dear teacher. Just stop red appling me and let's get started here. down here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is your chorus. I'd like everybody to join in. Come on now, don't be backward. Everybody sing. Ready? One, uh, two. Let's try it again. Come on, everybody, let's hear it now. Join in, loud and clear. That's better. Bonnet Sue, how'd you like it? Why, you've knocked them stiff. They're tossing their wives in the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jane, dear, you were wonderful. Oh, thanks, Aunt Mary. Oh, here's a telegram for you. In my excitement, I almost forgot about it. Funny went all right, didn't it? Great. Oh, Uncle Larry, did they like me? Was I all right? Oh, Janie, I'm proud of you. Now, don't forget your big chance is in the second act. And when it comes, give it all you got. Gee, I'm so nervous, I feel like there's butterflies inside of me. Hey, yeah. now, get going. Take those butterflies down to your dressing room. Get them into that second act costume. Okay. All right, kids, all right. Now, break it up. Hurry up, make your next change. Come on. Quietly, shh. Now, move out. Quiet. Hurry up. Hey, Joe, now keep that dimmer going all through the second act and change those lights from amber to blue. Yes, sir. Harry, you run down hurry those kids along, will you? They all work in the second act, you know. All right. Oh, Mr. Earl. Yeah? Yeah? I'm from the Children's Welfare Society. I'd like to talk to you about those children. Oh, I know. They're great, aren't they? See me after the show. I'm sorry, but this won't wait. It's important that we discuss it now. What is it? Well, most of those children appearing in your show are obviously under 12 years of age. Yeah? What about it? The law says you're not allowed to work children under 12 years of age after 10 o'clock at night. And it's after 10 now. Well, that would mean closing the show. I don't know anything about that. That's up to you. Oh, well, that law doesn't apply to me. You people are supposed to look after overworked kids in sweatshops and factories. I'm running a show here. You got nothing to do with the theater. You're mistaken there, Mr. Earl. Our society protects children everywhere. Well, wait a minute now. We're not committing any crime. 
Gee, you heard that audience out there. These kids were entertaining them, making them happy. Is there anything wrong in that? Can't all this be settled later? I'm afraid not. Well, listen, man. Do you realize what this means to me and to those kids? If you close the show, you're going to blast the hopes of all those children and their parents. Well, you can't close it. We got a great show. I agree with you, Mr. Earl, and I'm sympathetic. But you are breaking the law. And if you insist on going ahead, you're liable to severe penalties and possible imprisonment. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got some bad news. Can't quite figure it out myself yet, but they're not going to let me raise the curtain here on the second act. Seems like they've got some kind of a new law about working children at night. I, I guess I should have known about it, but I was too busy. Well, well, that's, that's about all, except that your money will be refunded at the box office. The functions of a team. Here's another batch, Mr. Earl. More wires. Kansas City. Baby Follies Company closed by Children's Society. Won't be allowed to reopen. Denver, forced to cancel kid minstrels. No use reading them, they all tell the same story, honey. Cleveland canceled, Baltimore canceled, Chicago canceled, Trenton, Albany, Buffalo canceled. There must be branches of the Children's Society all over. Well, when they closed the show, it just started a wave of protest all over the country against kids working on the stage. <laughs> Looks like the end of the Larry Earl Productions. Look, darling, I'm not worried about us. You'll find a way to get back on top. You did it once, you'll do it again. Gee, Mrs. Earl, you are solid gold. You know, Larry, it's Jane I'm sorry for. It's awfully cruel to come that close to success and then have it snatched away. I am your queen in calico. You are my bashful, barefoot bow. Love, Jane. <laughs> Swell kid. Larry, what are you going to do with Jane? She's still under contract to you. Do with her? I think I got an idea. A wonderful idea. The child is wonderfully gifted, wonderfully. But I am much concerned about having a young person like that singing with a symphony orchestra. It's never been done before. Oh, no, don't worry about that. She's magic in front of an audience, Dr. Damrosh. Believe me now, I know what I'm talking about. Jane, what do you think of the idea? Well... Uncle Larry always told me I could do things that I never thought I could do, and then somehow, I always did them. She's under exclusive contract to you, Mr. Earl. Oh, yes, yes, she is. Well, what do you want for her contract? Well, I hadn't exactly thought about that. Would two tickets to her opening night be asking too much? You couldn't make it three, could you? Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a few words before concluding our program. It is not often that the concert stage can present anything new, exciting, and unusual. But tonight, I feel privileged to announce that we have found someone who answers that description. A young soprano. She is new, her voice is exciting, and unusual because the young lady is just 14 years old. Tonight we give her the opportunity we feel she deserves to sing before you, ladies and gentlemen, at Carnegie Hall.
Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Miss Jane Grey. Found that a great piece of showmanship, I'll say. Mm -hmm. Sam Rush is a real star maker. <laughs> Uncle Larry! Oh, Jane! Jane, dear! Come here! 
Oh, I almost knocked everybody over backstage to get here. I was afraid you'd be gone. Gee, Jane, you were great. You were just like I said you'd be. You were simply wonderful, darling. We're so proud of you. I even liked you, too. Oh, thank you, Uncle Speed. Oh, but if I was a success at all, Uncle Larry, it was because of you and all the wonderful things that you've done for me. Oh, forget it, honey. Jane! Oh, Jean, darling, come to ya. The photographers are waiting. All right, Mother. Will you excuse me, Aunt Mary? Goodbye, Uncle Larry. Bye. Ta-ta. Oh, Mr. Earl, how do you do? You will excuse us, won't you? The press, you know, they're all here. And I don't like to keep reporters waiting. Come, baby. Goodbye. Come, darling. Come along. That's the first time I ever saw a ham with feathers. Speaking of ham, let's go up to my joint and have a bite. Why don't somebody say something? I'm supposed to be the only sourpuss around here. Look at me. I'm laughing myself to death. If I can smile through my tears, why can't you? Come on, let's eat, drink, sing, and be merry. If I was a millionaire, kids, if I was a millionaire, there wouldn't be nothing to... A little more champagne? No, thanks. ...for me and my pals to share. Now, don't tell me I'm shooting hot air, kids. If I was a millionaire, Larry. Well, honey, here we are, right back where we started. You suppose that floor walker job in the five and ten is still open? Oh, Larry, don't talk like that. Oh, what's the use? You put your heart and soul into something and look what happens. But, darling, it hasn't all been wasted. None of it. Well, you know the really fine things in life aren't written in bank books. Why, just think. Someday you'll walk down Broadway and you'll see all the kids you started, their names and lights, your kids, big stars. And all because there once was a fella named Larry Earl. All because there once was a gal named Mary. Yeah, and once there was the Larry Earl Productions, now reposing in Kane's storehouse. Say, what are you gonna do? Well, I haven't thought about it. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm all through with show business. They can have it. I'm gonna get me a little farm in Jersey and raise some chickens. How about yourself, Speed? What are you gonna do? I don't know. There's a fella trying to get me interested in promoting this gadget. But I can't see anything in it. What is it? It's what they call a crystal set wireless. Music and people talking. It comes out of nothing. The thin air. Here, put this on your ears and listen. about that thing. It's what they call a, a radio or something. Where's well, music? What goes on? Where's this coming from? Well, they play a phonograph or speak a piece in front of a thing they call a microphone in a building over here on Broadway. It comes from there. Well, that sounds interesting. Let me listen. It's a washout. You can get music better on a phonograph without this thing. Speed, wait a minute. You know what you've got here? Yeah, an earache. No, listen, can anybody hear on these things, anybody? Anybody that's got one of these rat traps. Look, honey, we're standing right here in this room listening to this thing, aren't we? Well, there must be a lot of such rooms in New York where people might want to hear this. Yes, well, but there are. And if you counted every house in every town, you'd get... What? Thousands! Speed! Do you realize the future this thing has? Why, it means entertainment can be sent to thousands of people who never had it before. 
It means an audience for show business that a hundred theaters couldn't hold. How are you going to charge people admissions when they're sitting at home? Going from door to door with a tambourine? No, they'll do what we did with Marlowe's Malted Milk. You get an advertiser, boost his product, and you'll pay for the show. All right, all right, you live to see the day when every home in the country will have a radio. Just a fad. It can't last. <laughs> That's what they said about the telephone. In a few years, remember this now, in a few years, that little gimmick will have every star in show business singing and acting over it. Why, it's a new show business for everybody. You're right, Larry, for, for everybody. Men, women, and children. Children. That's it, kids. I can use kids on it, and they can't stop me, nobody. Why, it's right out of heaven, and it's made to order for me. <laughs> America's finest breakfast food brings you this international broadcast commemorating the fifth anniversary of the number one program of the air which has been brought to you every Sunday evening and features the man who has discovered more talent than anyone in the history of show business, Larry Earle and his stars of tomorrow. Take it away, star maker. Mother, hurry, hurry, you'll miss him. Jane, dear, you simply must give me time to dress. How can you expect... Shh, the bluebird. Oh, we're referring to the bluebird. Hear that new note in his song. Ladies and gentlemen, we mean to tell you. If you're a bluebird, nothing ever goes wrong. Things may happen. Let them happen, still the bluebirds sing. Storms have rainbows, life has dreams, and cares you know have wings. And those heartaches, aren't they really unimportant things? The sun may hide behind the hill And still the bluebird sing And those hikes are the real Aren't they really unimportant things? The sun may hide behind the hill what do you think he'll do next? He's already done it. Done what? Bought the broadcasting company. Still the blue banner. Say.